After setting up your application permissions in the manifest, the next step is to get an API key. API keys are required for all Google services. There was an API key that was used in the Google Maps Android API v1, but you can't get new versions of those API keys anymore. You can only get them for v2, the version that we'll be using. To get an API key, you'll need to get some information from your key store, the file that you use to sign the application. Each application has two key stores at least, one that's used for production to sign the application before it's deployed to the Google Play Store or other markets, and one at least for debugging. I'll be working with the debug key store for most of this course, so that's the key store that I want. To create the API key, go to the Google APIs console, available at the URL code.google.com slash APIs slash console. If you aren't already logged in with a Google login, you'll be prompted to log in. And if you don't have a Google login, you can create one for free. Get to this screen before you continue with the lesson. But if you're at this screen, you can click the big button to create a new API project. If you already have a Google login, and you've previously created a project on the Google APIs console, you'll see something different. To create a new project in that case, choose the drop-down arrow next to the current project, and then choose Create from the bottom of the menu, and then follow the prompts to create the new project. An API project is used to manage all the available Google services, and there's a fairly long list. The one that we're concerned with is the Google Maps Android API v2 this one right here. But before we're ready to deal with it, we first want to rename the project. The name of the application that I'm working on is called simply My Map. You can find the application name in the strings.xml file under App Name. It's right here. I'll copy that, and I'll come back to the API console. I'll pull down the menu, and I'll click Rename and I'll change the name of my project from API project to my map and click Save. Next, I'll activate the Google Maps Android API. I'll scroll back down to where the API appeared. Here it is. And I'll click the switch to turn it on and activate it. You might be prompted to read through the terms and service and accept them. Complete that task and then you're ready to move forward. Now that API is activated for use in this application. The next step is to generate the API key. Go back to the menu and you'll see some new items have appeared. Click API Access. On this screen, you can create a variety of different keys. Each new project automatically gets a key for browser apps, but that's not what we need. We're creating an Android app. So I'll click Create New Android Key, and that brings up this dialog. In order to create the key, you need a value called the SHA1 fingerprint of your developer certificate, also known as your key store. And as I mentioned, you'll probably be working with more than one key store. I'm going to follow the process for the debug key store, but remember before you deploy your application, you'll need to do the same thing for your production key store. In order to get the SHA1 fingerprint, you can follow the instructions on this screen, going to a command line and using Java's key tool application to get the SHA1 fingerprint. But Eclipse actually offers a much simpler way. I'll go back to Eclipse and I'll go to the Preferences dialog. If you're working in Windows, select Window Preferences, and if you're working on Mac, go to the Application menu and choose Preferences. Next, go to the Android category. Open up the tree and click Build. And you'll see the SHA1 fingerprint is displayed right there. You'll also see the location of your debug key store. Each development computer will have its own debug key store file. And so, if you're working on an app with multiple developers, you'll need to register all the fingerprints from all the development computers. The good news is, it's a simple thing to add all the fingerprints to a single API key, so you don't have to manage multiple keys. I'll select and copy the fingerprint and cancel out of the dialog. Then I'll return to the browser and I'll configure my key. I'll click into the text box 
and paste in the fingerprint. After the fingerprint, put in a semicolon, and then add to that the package of the application. As always, I try to make sure I'm getting it right, so I'll go back to the application manifest, and I'll select and copy the application package, then come back to the browser and paste the package in. If you want to add another key store, just add another line. So for example, you might take this line, copy and paste it, and then replace the fingerprint from the original development computer with another development computer or your production key store. I'm going to keep it simple with a single fingerprint. I'll click Create, and that generates the key for the Android apps. I'll select the key by double-clicking it and copy it to the clipboard. I pressed Ctrl-C. If you're working on Mac, press Command-C. Next, you need to register the API key with the application, and this will go in the application manifest, the same place where you put the permissions. I'll go back to the manifest and scroll down toward the bottom of the file. To register the API key, add a tag called metadata. It goes in the application tags, and I'm placing it after the activity. I'll type in meta, press control space, and choose metadata, and I'll add two attributes. Android name is set to the following string, com dot google dot android dot maps dot v2 dot api underscore key. It's case sensitive. Type it exactly as you see it here. Then I'll add an android value attribute, and I'll paste in the api key that was generated at the api console. So now I have an api key that's unique to my development computer. But here's the thing. My API key is different from your API key, if you've been following along. And so for subsequent projects in this course, when you open them up, I can't give you the API key. It has to be unique to your computer. So to make it easy to start up with each new project in the course, I recommend that you take this API key and save it somewhere where you can easily get to it. I'll handle this by going into the Exercise Files to the Assets folder and I've placed a text file there called API key. You can open it in any text editor. I'll paste in the API key that I just generated, save the file and close it, and now I can easily get to the API key later when I need it. So those are all the steps you need to follow to get the fingerprint of your debug key store, generate the API key, and then register the API key in the application by adding it to the application manifest. We still have a couple of steps to go through before we're ready to actually display a map in an Android app, but we're getting close.